Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating a wipe transition in Photoshop. Photoshop, that's right. We're going to do a little bit of animating in Photoshop, just simply wiping from this photo to this photo. It's a cool little effect. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with it. It's used all over the place as a photo transition effect. But more importantly, what we're going to be covering is the new method of animating here in Photoshop. I have realized I haven't done any tutorials on the timeline animation techniques in Photoshop. So we're going to be taking a, a not an in-depth look, but you know, just a basic look at what's going on and get you started using the timeline animator in Photoshop because it really is uh, fabulous what they've done with it. So first thing I want to do is come image, image size, and I'm going to set the width to 700. And note, when I set the width to 700, the height becomes 525. That's something we want to remember, 700 by 525, because we want our other image to be exactly that. I'm going to hit Command or Control Tab to flip over to my other image, like my Crop tool. Here, I'm going to set my width to 700 and my height to 525. Then I'm just going to drag out the part of the image that I want. Hit the Enter key, crops the image and resizes it. Wonderful. Command or Control A to select all. Edit Copy. Control or Command Tab, Edit Paste, and there we go, we have our image. I'm going to double click on this layer and rename it Oil. I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to Alter Option, double click my background layer to unbackground it, and double click and name this one Ocean. I'm going to drag my Ocean layer on top, and now Ocean on top, Oil on the bottom. Now we want to go Window, Animation. Now here is the animation panel. It doesn't look too much different. I mean, you look, you still line up frames looks pretty much the same. However, if you notice in the bottom corner here, bottom right corner that is, we have a convert to timeline animation button. When you select that, you suddenly get this brand new animation dialog box. And this is so much more powerful than the frame-based animation techniques in Photoshop. I mean, it's night and day. It's a huge difference. So much more powerful. You can, you know, keyframe things. You can work with multiple layers, multiple tweens, and just it, so many things it's incredible compared to what you used to be able to do and when you want to go back and edit something so much easier when you're working with a timeline as opposed to all of your frames stacked up one in front of the other now there is something that I should point out when you're working in the timeline animation uh, method or mode excuse me or frame you really don't want to go switching back and forth because it starts messing things up you start losing your work and it's it's not good so you really just want to, if you work in timeline, stay in timeline. If you want to work in frame by frame, just stay in frame by frame. Now, that's obviously just in the same document. If you want to do different uh, methods of animation for different documents, whatever you feel comfortable with. But when you, if I was going to animate the wipe transition here and then switch back to frame by frame, it would really mess things up. So just something to keep in mind. It'll save you a lot of time. You don't want to you know, click that and, ah, what did I do? So, yeah, just keep that in mind. And... Uh, Let's check to see what all we can do. Next to these two layers, you can see I've got ocean and oil. Those are my two layers. I can hit either of these little arrows, and it drops down and shows me the different properties of that layer that I can animate. The position, the opacity, and the style. Now, style, that's layer styles. Now, with the ocean layer, I just want to apply a mask. I'm going to click the mask button. It just throws a white mask on there. It doesn't look like anything's changed because essentially nothing really has. But if I open up the ocean layer again, you can see that I now have layer mask position and layer mask enable two additional properties that I can animate if I want. We're going to be animating the layer mask position in just a minute. You know, I'll leave the ocean uh, layer open. I'm just going to move the animation uh, off the animation panel. Excuse me, that's the word I'm looking for, panel. Off screen, and uh, I'm going to control or command click my mask here for the ocean layer, and I'm just going to fill it with black. That'd be alt backspace, option backspace for those of you using a Mac. And then just Command or Control D to deselect. So I now have my ocean has completely disappeared. Solid black in the mask. I also want to unlink the mask from the image layer. Now that I've done this, I'm going to bring the animation timeline panel back onto stage, or not onto stage, on into window, I should say. And I'm going to hit the little stopwatch next to the layer mask position property. You can see that place is a keyframe, that little yellow diamond keyframe. Those are like, you can consider them your stops in the animation if you've never animated before. You set up keyframes and you tween in between keyframes. So your keyframes are usually going to be the differences in uh, your animation. However, right here we're going to place a keyframe and we're going to move ahead two seconds into the timeline. We can watch our timer here or up here at the top of the timeline. We also have our second marks. So there's two seconds. 
and I'm going to hit in between these two little arrows, there is a diamond that places a keyframe. So from zero seconds to two seconds, nothing's going to change. Now, between two and four seconds, over that two second period of time, I want this wipe transition to wipe across. So I'm going to move up here to four seconds. And when you're making a change, Photoshop auto keyframes for you. It'll automatically place a keyframe where you make a change. So you don't have to worry about coming in here and placing a keyframe. All we have to do is select this mask, grab our move tool, and start moving it over. Okay, see, so I'm just going to move it right over. Matter of fact, I'm just going to click and drag, hold the shift key to keep it straight. Drag it right across, just like so. You can see we have our keyframe right in there. Now, if I just drag my playhead scrubber across there, you can see I've got it moving right across. Matter of fact, if I move this down, I can use the play button here. That play button, hit play, and we can see it just slides right across the screen. Wonderful. So we want this to be more of a nice, smooth sort of wipe transition. So I'm going to select anywhere oops, in between these two keyframes here. Right there is fine. And I'm going to select that mask for ocean. And I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur it, oh, I don't know, let's say 25 pixels. That looks good. 25 pixels is good. Now, the thing you want to watch for here is now that I've blurred it, you can see right over here, you can sort of see a almost halo blue effect happening. So you just want to keep that in mind or watch that. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is select my mask and hit Command or Control T. I'm going to move the animation panel out of the way. And I'm just going to pull it this way just to completely cover that up. The check button once that's done. And right here, nothing happens. And as soon as we get to here, we've got this nice fade across. And because we blurred it, we actually have to move this mask a little further. No problem, though. Just drag it right off. Wonderful. So the first two seconds, nothing. Then it fades across. And for another two seconds, we want this ocean image to stay. So at six seconds, we are going to place another keyframe. And then over at eight seconds, we're going to slide that mask right back across. So I'm going to click, drag, hold the shift key. Drag it right back across, just like so. And it is not auto keyframing because I let go where I shouldn't have. Okay, and it's gonna keep coming across. There we go. And it has auto keyframe, so we can see that it comes right back. So that's pretty much it. Now all I have to do is I'm gonna move the animation timeline off screen. You're not gonna be able to see it here for a second. I'm gonna hit the play button. And for the first couple seconds, we just see this image. Yeah, it's very nice kind of dull and this slides right across now it's going a little slower than it normally would be um, because it's in Photoshop it's you know rendering all the frames and everything for us so you can see and here I'm just gonna manually speed it up I'm just gonna drag it and it would slide right back across just like that wonderful so that's a simple timeline animation photo transition wipe transition uh, using the new animation timeline. But here's something that's pretty cool about this. I'm just going to minimize the animation timeline and move it off screen because we're kind of done with it for now. You can come in here and let's say image canvas size. Let's add, oh, I don't know, a half inch all around this image. Half inch. Uh, we're going to check relative on. Hit OK. Okay, so we've added a nice little half inch here. I'm going to control click the new layer icon to add a layer beneath. And I'm going to fill it with white. Okay, you can see here, filled it with white. Very nice, it looks good. We can also come up above it. I'm going to control click on the image. So I'm creating a selection around the image. And I'm going to use my elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to select the intersect with shape or intersect with selection, excuse me, option. It's the one all the way over to the right. And I'm just going to draw a nice rounded uh, selection right over the other selection, just like that. So I get a nice. Uh, nice curved selection and I'm going to use my gradient tool and I'm going to use foreground and transparent I'm just going to make a nice little shine here like that command or control D to deselect we can set this to oh, I don't know let's just set it to soft light just so we don't really lower the opacity which kind of brightens the top of the image and even with all of this going on around this animation if I were to take this animation and now I'm off screen here I'm going to move on to screen just so you can see my playhead here but you can see that even as I scrub through our timeline here, 
that animation plays right underneath on top of our frame and underneath our shine. So it's very cool. When you set up an animation, you can always go in and work around it and do all sorts of things. You could come in here and you could edit the uh, amount of blur you have on this mask. You could add another mask to a different layer. You could do all sorts of different things. Um, you could, you know, tween the opacity or position or add a layer style to it. All sorts of things. The sky is really the limit with this animating uh, technique. There's just so much you can do with it. Now, a lot of it was possible before with frame by frame animation, but the vast majority of it really was not able to be done easily at all at all so that's really it that's a, a quick lesson on animating in Photoshop and if you want you can even come up here and export this as video render as video you can save it out as a QuickTime movie or a few other types of video if it were a smaller file I would take you through the file uh, save for web and devices you could save this as an animated GIF file so all types all kinds of things excuse me that you can do uh, animating here in Photoshop. That's it for this one. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And hey, go check out the site if you get some time www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.